Hello. She's Emily. And she's Madsen. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our new reading book club, club Book Smart. Smart. Each month, with the help of our friends from Burgess Hill Girls, we are going to be sharing our recommendations for books we think you'll love to read. We will also meet some of our favourite authors and give you a chance to win one of their books. So, let's start proceedings by meeting one of our favourite authors, Sarah Bernard. Sarah has written six books for young adults. One of them, Flawed, was a collaboration with six of the UK's much-loved YA authors. We caught up with Zara on Zoom. Hello, Zara. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, oh, thank you I'm for having me. To be doing this interview with you. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Okay, so we have a few questions for in you. In the book, um, it's a lovely book, by the way, uh, Beautiful Broken Things. Did you base uh, the character Suzanne on anyone in your life? or? Um, not really. I don't tend to base my characters off specific people. Um, they're, they're always their own character. Um, I think people from, you know, people you know in your own life, especially your friends, sort of come into the character and stuff that you've done or has happened to you kind of comes in. But the characters, characters themselves aren't based on anybody specific. Um, I think you can get a lot of trouble if you try and do that. <laughs> it doesn't end well. Can I ask a question? Uh, what, what, what was it that made you ask about Suzanne specifically? Well, uh, in her like character, she's, she goes through a lot of things. And I was wondering, and she has a very like certain mindset and she felt really authentic and real. Oh. And so I was wondering, like, um, since she felt so real, if she um, was based on anyone. All oh, right. Yeah, no, no more than any of the others. Um, I think actually when I when I have based them more on people I know in the past, that's when it's sort of actually felt less authentic in a weird kind of way. So, yeah, no, entirely fictional. Awesome. So what was it like collaborating with other authors on your book, Flawed? Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Um, the the best thing about it was that the other authors and me were all friends. We all know each other quite well because the you know the the UK YA community is quite small, so we knew each other anyway. And then we got this opportunity to work together, which was really really nice. So I mean, it was difficult sometimes, of course, because there are quite a few of us. But it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. So how did the idea come about? Like, how was it organised? the initial ideas and process so the the idea was um an editor called rachel petty it was her idea and so she kind of found authors who would be interested she sent out saying would you like to be involved in this project and um, i said yes and they said yes and then all we knew was that we were going to write a book together we didn't know anything else we just came together we had a meeting and we talked about what could we do together what would make the most interesting book out of our seven different writing styles and, and things like that. And so we thought, how, what kind of story do we want to tell? So we came up with a story together and then we figured out the best way for us to tell that story with, our, with, with seven different voices. So that's how it worked. That's really cool. So I was also wondering with that, what, uh, so how, how did you end up writing it? Was it like uh, each author wrote a chapter or was it to do with characters? We each took a character. Um, that first meeting that we had when we came up with the story, we each came up with our character ideas as well. And, um, and then it was the case of we would, we, we would have another meeting every time we were coming to a new section because it's uh, every year. So, and we would talk about what was going to happen in that time period. And then we would go away and we would each write our character's voice, send the chapter to everybody else. They would all read it. And then the next person in the sequence would write their bit. And they kind of went like that. So it was a lot of emailing documents back and forth. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, in your book, A Quiet Kind of Thunder, there's a deaf character and a selective mute character. So I was wondering, like, how did you go about conducting your research into those, like, um, ideas? Um, well, I did a lot of reading. 
um, a lot of uh, research online. I talked to quite a few different people. Um, and I did a, an online BSL course, British Sign Language, uh, so I could incorporate that into the story or um, as authentically as possible. I didn't want to just be looking up individual phrases, if you see what I mean. I wanted to have an idea of how it felt and how it looks for people. Um, and for stuff like for the selective mutism, for example, I wanted, I don't ever want to go too heavy into the, the research straight away. I want to make sure that the character is authentic. So everything that I'm doing is how would this specific character experience this specific thing? So with the selective mutism, one of the things that I did was I read a, a teacher's manual. So it's designed for teachers who have students who have selective mutism. So when I read that, I could think, right, how would Steffi have experienced school life? What would teachers have been saying to her? And how would she have experienced that? So I wasn't reading like, this is how it feels to have selective mutism. I was reading, this is what you should do if you have, if you have somebody in your environment who has selective mutism. And then I could think, how would Steffi feel about being treated that way? And so it kind of, it was, it's all a kind of a roundabout way of, of, of getting to the person, the, the protagonist's character. That's, that's really awesome. Um, so in your new book coming out in April, Destination Anywhere, the protagonist Peyton travels to a random location. Has that ever been a dream of yours? Um, well, I don't like flying, so no. <laughs> I've I've never wanted I've never wanted to do it in the way that she does it, which is that she does just get on a plane. Um, I I would never do that because I don't like planes. But if I could go to a random destination by train, or be picked up in a car and not know where I was going, yes, I would think that was quite exciting. But also, I like to be prepared. Like I wouldn't I would want to know: Am I going somewhere cold? Am I going somewhere hot? Otherwise, I would worry about packing. So I think I'm a bit I'm a bit too organised. <laughs> To, to be that spontaneous. <laughs> so was that like concept about that inspired in any way by lockdown and the restraints that are put on in these current times? Um, no, the, the book, because um, you have to write things quite far in advance um, before they're published. And um, Destination Anywhere was actually supposed to come out last year and it got delayed because of the pandemic and all the bookshops being closed. Um, so I actually wrote Destination Anywhere in 2019, um, which was obviously, we had no idea what was going to happen then. Um, I wrote it thinking, I'd never have dreamed that when it came out, people couldn't get on planes and go and travel and see each other. Um, it was, yeah, a completely different world. Um, so no, that was just a coincidence, really, that it's turned, that it's turned out that way. Um, I, but I hope that kind of makes it a good time for it to come out to, to be able to read a, like a happy story about traveling and friendship um, in a way that maybe would have been a bit different if it had come out a couple of years ago. Almost like a way to escape real life you know. Yeah which um, is what's happening in the book as well so yeah, yeah it does work out quite yeah, well. Yeah like you're reading the book to escape real life and they're also escaping real life in the book. Yeah. So how has your creativity been affected by lockdown? Um, well, I think, I think for this, it would be the same for most people, which is say you've got a lot more time, but also a lot more stress and a lot more anxiety. And that can really stop your creativity because you've just got so much going on in your head um, that it, it's hard to find that focus again. And also there's a lot of concern about, well, is this story relevant? Like, am I writing something that's going to resonate with people in this new world that we have especially when you're writing for young people you know you're writing for teenagers like yourselves um you don't want to be saying oh this is what teenagers are going to want to read because you just don't know and because we're still right in the middle of it you know we don't know how it's going to end yet hopefully it's going to end soon and well hopefully but we don't know yet so i think also you don't want to be trying to predict things so um, it has been difficult. Um, I have still been writing, um, writing a, a new book, but um, it's been a very interesting time to be, to try and be creative. But I think it's an important time to be creative as well. I mean, now more than ever, people need stories. So just trying to keep going, really. Definitely, 100%.
And speaking about future projects, do you have any planned or anything of such? Um, I'm still I'm still working on it and talking to my publisher about it and trying to decide what's going to be the, the next best thing and, and um, what kind of story do we want to be telling at this time because the book that I would be writing now would come out next year in 2022 um, so who knows what's going to be what it's going to be like then but um, yes there is there will be another book but I don't know for certain what it's going to be yet. Well, it's been lovely having, having you, Sarah. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, great questions. Thank you. <laughs> it was so great to meet Sarah. She was just how I imagined. I thought so too. She, and she gave us a signed copy of the book Flawed to give away to you guys. For a chance to win this book, just leave a comment and share the video using the hashtag Booksmart. The winner will be announced in next month's video, where there will also be a, an opportunity to win another book. Emily, Madsen, would you like to get some recommendations on other books to read? Oh, definitely. Here they are then. Hi, I'm Evie and I'm here to talk to you about one of my most favourite books of all time, Out of Control by Sarah Alderson. It's a fast-paced, action-packed thriller around two teenagers named Liver and Jay running on the streets of New York from a Russian mafia gang. If you are into high-quality page turners or admire the city, this is the book for you. Hi, I'm Molly, and the book I recommend is It Only Happens in Movies by Holly Bourne. The book is about two teenagers, Audrey and Harry, and following their love story. I love this book because the characters are likeable and relatable, and if you like rom-coms, you'll love this book. Hi, I'm Madison, and I'm going to recommend Indigo Donut by Patrice Lawrence. Indigo Donut's about two teenagers in the real-life genre. I particularly love how their backstories affect them in the present. It's heavily influenced by music, so if you love music, you'll love this book. Hello, I'm Emily, and today I'm going to talk to you about The Door That Led to Where by Sally Gardner, an amazing historical fiction book with an engaging plot and intriguing characters that I think a lot of people would enjoy. Hi, the book I'd like to recommend to you today is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, which I've read about 27,000 times. It's one of the funniest books I've ever read. I don't generally go in for sci-fi, but what I do go in for is funny books, and this is a very funny book. The plot's a little complicated, so I won't try to explain it to you now, but please, just read it. You'll thank me later. That's all for this month's Booksmart. We hope you enjoyed it. Please tell us what you think in the comments section, ideally using the hashtag Booksmart. <laughs> See, See you next month! month.